the last time I did lose to Kai Green was at the March 2010 Arnold Classic. And I worked really hard to try to make sure that would never happen again. With the title of Mr. Olympia on lock, Phil understood that he was entering a different dimension. He understood that he now had to think like a champion and tailor his mentality and training accordingly. Instead of being the underdog, he would now have to deal with many underdogs coming after him, something which he knew he had to get ahead of, given the quickly evolving competitive landscape of bodybuilding. But despite that, he was always ready. He wasn't close to satisfied with one Olympia. He wanted to be the GOAT. So he began looking at Olympia champions in tiers. He saw all of the one-time winners as being on the same tier as him. And then the two-time winners as the next tier, the three-time winners on the tier after that, so on and so forth. But his ultimate goal was to be on a tier of his own, a tier that would be almost impossible to replicate. With being the reigning Olympia champion came a lot of new responsibility for Phil, because the title of Mr. Olympia was not just a physique, it was an attitude, a mentality, and the greatest endorsement for a bodybuilder. And as the Mr. O, Phil needed to take that as seriously as he took his training. Despite shifting his focus to defending his Olympia title, Phil was on the road, doing guest posings, appearances, and trying to maximize his new brand image as much as possible. You know, as any new Mr. Olympia should do. But while Phil was enjoying the fruits of being Mr. Olympia, the rest of the field was trying to jostle for the number one contender spot. With the impressive crop of elite bodybuilders in the open, Phil would most certainly have his hands full heading into the 2012 Mr. Olympia. However, what Phil would also have that he didn't realize at the time was a budding rival who would push him to his limit and in the process create one of the greatest and most entertaining rivalries in bodybuilding history. Now, up until this point, Kai and Phil have had quite a few encounters on the bodybuilding stage, with the two sharing the stage a total of seven times, and Phil having come out on top five of those seven instances, it was clear that Phil had the edge. However, over the course of their careers, when you take a look at all of their encounters, Kai had not been too far behind. Having finished third at the Olympia and second at the Shuro Classic, Kai was making it clear that he was not going to stop coming after Phil. In fact, he wanted to be Phil's biggest nightmare. With consistent improvements over his career, fueled by his incredible work ethic, Kai was heading into the 2012 Mr. Olympia ready to make a statement. It was becoming clear that Kai was a favorite to be Phil's top contender heading into the 2012 Mr. Olympia. His physique aside, Kai's increase in popularity over the course of his career was aided greatly by his personality. He was eccentric, quirky, outspoken, and the true definition of a wild card. He was everything that Phil was not. Or at least that's how it appeared. While a lot of Phil's rhetoric was motivational, Kai knew how to gain attention. He knew how to stir the pot and create a buzz around his name. He had the type of personality that would put fans in seats at major shows, an ability which combined with his physique made him Phil's perfect counterpart. Well, you know, you have a lot of fans. The fan base is huge for you. Everyone wants to see your best. So we, we, we expect a, a great performance by you, not only with the physique, but you put on a great show. And I'm sure all the, the spectators are going to give you a huge ovation out there. So listen, give it your all. It's good. I'm going to be happy to be watching you. And uh, I'm sure all the viewers here on NPC News, News Online will be watching too. So give them a shout out, man. Give them a shout out. Hey, well. Give a shout out to everybody out there that knows what it's like to work really hard and something and try to see a dream realized. Is your A game enough to beat Phil Heath? My A game is enough to do a lot of damage. That really, that wasn't what I asked, was it? Okay. If you and Phil Heath are 100% on game day, who wins? I expect to be the last man standing this year. At the 2012 Mr. Olympia, it was clear during prejudging that Kai and Phil were 1 and 2, due to the judges placing them in their own callout. Phil came back in Peru from 2011 and brought his signature look but more refined, eye popping if you will. Kai on that same note brought his best physique to date as well. He had these tall bicep peaks and a very sharp V taper which accentuated his X frame in all of his poses. He was also wider than Phil from behind. His conditioning was super sharp and crisp, he was extremely separated, and he looked absolutely translucent under that lighting. Despite these strong points, the fullness and thickness of Phil's muscle bellies, combined with his conditioning, was simply undeniable.
As good as Kai was, it was clear that Phil was too much for him, something which became more evident the more they continued to pose in the finals, because Phil just kept getting better. Once their battle was over, it was clear as day on Kai's face that he knew Phil got the best of him, something which was confirmed when they'd announced the 2012 Mr. Olympia champion. Phil, he... And as we discussed earlier, Larry, Phil just a little too much for Kai and takes the next step down the road to building that legacy we talked about. Being the consummate competitor he is, Kai congratulated Phil on his second Olympia, but also made it clear through pure eye contact that it wasn't over. Kai, however, was the least of Phil's worries in that moment, as he was ready to enjoy the taste of sweet victory. He had figured it out, especially with the help of his coach Hani Rambod, who was most known for coaching Jay Cutler to his Olympia victories. Their pairing was a match made in bodybuilding heaven, something which they both quickly realized. Phil's gifts combined with Hani's training and prep methodology created the perfect coach and athlete dynamic. Hani, we're here with two-time Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath. We're just talking about the change you made overnight and how good it feels to win. What do you got to say? Well, obviously, it was, it was a pretty stressful moment. You know, we were uh, looking forward to presenting a package, and by the time we got up on stage, there were some things that, that we needed to tweak, and in the last 24 hours, we were able to do that. Just like in 2011, Phil returned to the Shuru Classic a few weeks after the Olympia, where he placed first yet again. Behind him, however, was his all-too-familiar friend Kai Green, who placed second, just like the previous year. While Phil would go into the offseason ready to fulfill his duties as the ambassador of the sport, he couldn't help but to have fending off Kai Green in the back of his mind. Now, at this point in his career, Phil was looking unstoppable, because since his first Olympia victory, he had only been improving, and there was no reason to believe that that would not continue, despite the challenge from the rest of the competition. Names like Dexter Jackson, Dennis Wolf, Branch Warren, and Sean Roden were seemingly all in a battle for every other spot except first. However, ahead of all of them was Kai Green, who was not slowing down at all. The whole Last thing. year he was number two. This year I'm predicting he's going all the way. We are rooting for him big time, not only because he seems like a nice guy, he's also one of us. He's a Brooklynite. Right. Uh, Kai Green, welcome to Good Day New York. How you doing? I am great. Thank you for having me. So Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Phil garnered him a lot of fans who would back him. The entire industry was very pleased with the package that Kai brought to the 2012 Olympia, and Phil was hearing it, but he still had tunnel vision. He was focused on getting number three and continuing to make history. While he didn't discount how talented the competition was, he knew that he had to basically beat his former self to continue to win, something which put a lot of pressure on him. But having the mindset that he did, Phil was more than ready for the challenge. He had to look at himself and wonder, how do I continue to win? At this point, he had also dubbed himself the Dream Killer and became a lot more comfortable talking spicy to the rest of the competitors because he knew that he could back it up. No, because it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, he can sign whatever the hell he wants. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. Obviously, I didn't care. All I care about is winning my third title, you know, creating this legacy that I want to live and uh, crushing everybody's dreams. Just like that. At the 2013 press conference, Kai was relatively quiet and decided to say very little. While this was due to his own confidence heading into the show, it only added to the anticipation for the prejudging. Did I not see you sign the poster and it said Kai Green, Mr. Olympia underneath it? Yes, you did. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> I intend to be a person of very few words. <laughs> no, I can show you better than I can tell you. Fired up as he walks to the stage. Your defending champ, let's take a look. As the prejudging was underway, Phil came out slightly improved from the previous year. He was clearly still Phil Heath. While guys like Sean Roden and Dennis Wolf were given opportunities to stand in the center, in the end, it was Phil and Kai once again who would be battling for the top spot. Uh, after last year's Olympia, 
even with a perfect score, I got, you know, obviously a lot of negative feedback from fans. I think they, you know, they really wanted to see a change um, because they were very excited what Kai Green presented in 2012. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my hat goes off to the guy. I mean, he, he definitely prepared well for that. Um, you know, realizing that, you know, there, there takes a lot of maturity as being a champion. And, you know, you try to settle into that, you know, and it's for, you only have so much time to settle into that. It's very, very hard because you only have 12 other people to get advice from for that. And it's very difficult because of the Internet, you know, the, the you know, you start listening to way too many negativity, and a lot of negative people and stuff, and it starts to piss you off. And, you know, I just felt like I didn't get, you know, how I say it, I just felt like everybody just concerned about the gift and this and that instead of being concerned about, hey, this guy's worked his ass off. I mean, let's, let's cut him some slack. I mean, this guy's trained probably half the years as everybody else. And there is no magical anything that could make this guy do that other than hard work, dedication, and genetics combined. Kai had clearly put an emphasis on coming in fuller to match Phil, which there was visible improvement. However, he wasn't nearly as conditioned as he was in 2012, nor was he as separated. He also looked a bit flat in some poses, but ultimately, he just wasn't his best. Hell, there's a strong argument to be made that he regressed in his overall package. He still had that impressive flow and an amazing routine to show off, but when it came down to the mandatories, he did not do nearly enough to beat Phil. This laid a clear path for Phil to get his third sand out, and although he wasn't perfect, he was clearly still the best bodybuilder in the world with little to no signs of slowing down. And at the end of the finals, Phil Heath's name would get called and announced as a three-time Mr. Olympia. Three-time Mr. Olympia, Phil Heath! Congratulations to Phil Heath, Mr. Olympia 2013, and once again, Kai Green falling just short, but a very respectable second place in a stacked field tonight here at Mr. Olympia 2013. With this victory, Phil became the first bodybuilder to three-peat since Ronnie Coleman, a feat which foreshadowed his future in the sport. If it wasn't already clear, he was here to stay and planned on making history in the process. Um, you know, this year has been very tough, but I, I definitely feel that, you know, with both of our collective work, we were able to achieve what you guys saw on Friday, which was awesome, and what was awesome, obviously, tonight. As his legend grew and his impact in bodybuilding history grew, so did the criticism about him, for a few reasons. For starters, as much as American culture loves the underdog, it's up to a certain point. See, when the underdog becomes a top dog, the love and admiration they get turns into resentment because they eventually represent the complete opposite of what they were loved and admired for, even if they don't substantively change. Think the Golden State Warriors, for example. They drafted and developed their talent hired the right coach in front office, and built the foundation of their dynasty the right way, and then started winning, and winning, and winning, and eventually became hated. This was exactly what happened to Phil. He spent a lot of time in the NPC, building and developing his physique, and eventually getting his pro card. And from then on, quietly made improvements to get himself to the point where he was ready to step on the Olympia stage. And from then on, the rest is history. Now, despite the fact that he didn't change at his core, what he represented did and so did the perception around his name. Please take the Sandow Bronze Award and the title of 2011 Mr. Olympia to our winner tonight. Phil Heath has had a lot of gifts. He's the gift. I mean, you know, you got gifts, and gifts are great. This dude is still fighting for his life. It ain't all talk when you're on that stage, man. Seven days before the 2013 Mr. Olympia, Generation Iron One was released. It was seen as a spiritual successor to the iconic Pumping Iron which revolutionized bodybuilding and made Arnold Schwarzenegger a household name. Generation Iron contained the same thematic elements as Pumping Iron, documentary film covering the nitty-gritty of the industry by giving insight into the top bodybuilders and their struggles as they prep for the Olympia. 
For pumping iron, it was a 1975 Mr. Olympia, and for generation iron, it was 2012. Despite the road to the Olympia being a central focus, the most dramatized aspect of both films is the dichotomy between the underdog and the top dog, and the contrast between their life and struggles. While Lou and Arnold were the focus of this dichotomy for pumping iron, Kai and Phil were the focus for its spiritual successor. Generation Iron borrowed from that thematic element to recreate a modern version of the Lou and Arnold rivalry in Kai and Phil, which subsequently created a narrative that added fuel to the metaphorical fire. Kai was portrayed as the underdog who came from nothing and made something of himself. Phil, on the other hand, was portrayed as the spoiled, gifted prodigy who was given every avenue and opportunity to succeed. Kai was essentially portrayed as the quintessential underdog that America loved, while Phil was portrayed as the villain in his way. A portrayal which was objectively skewed and downplayed the real nature of Phil's life and his struggles. While Phil and Kai did not have the same exact upbringing, they share a fair amount of struggle and adversity in common, something which the film does not properly highlight for the sake of entertainment. After all, every protagonist needs an antagonist, and as previously mentioned, Kai was Phil's perfect foil if he had one, the biggest threat to his reign at the time. So, sensationalizing their rivalry made things very interesting for not just the next Olympia, but the IFBB as well. For Phil's overall brand image, Generation Iron 1 did not do him any favors. He went from being a film antagonist to an actual villain in the eyes of a lot of fans. Combine this with the fact that he was looking unbeatable and continuously improving, and Phil would have to learn to deal with a lot more hate than he was used to. But that's not only the price of being a champion, but the price of being gifted. And uh, Honey pulls his side. He goes, I think we're in trouble, man. I go, why? He goes, because I know what some morons are gonna think, and he's gonna be mad. Maybe mad at me for saying, you know, using that word, but it's like some jackass is gonna say. And I was like, what's that? And he goes, they're gonna th think that you had everything handed to you, Phil. That you didn't have to work hard and this and that, and they're just gonna hate you for being good. Now, while Phil was solely focused on winning his next Olympia title, Kai was solely focused on dethroning him once and for all. Having come so close to victory and not tasting it was a very, very difficult pill for him to swallow. 2012 was a tough loss. 2013, however, was downright painful, and Phil knew it. Phil once again continued to focus on growth in the offseason to keep the rest of the competition at arm's length. He didn't need to reinvent the wheel, he just needed to be Phil Heath. Because as we know in bodybuilding, the reigning champion usually gets the benefit of the doubt. And with Phil doing enough to win year over year, there was no reason to believe that anyone including Kai would actually be able to dethrone him. Now, Kai on the other hand was running out of options. He brought his most refined look in 2012 and lost. He tried to play the size game in 2013 and lost again. And at this point, he didn't know what to do to be able to get the successful upset. So, he resorted to mental warfare to try to knock Phil off of his game. If you can't beat the champion, then get in his head. This was a tactic that Kai decided to employ as the show got closer. With Phil's prep over and the Olympia right around the corner, it was time for the pre-show festivities. And at a meet and greet event, Kai took it upon himself to sign his name on Phil's pictures and products. Sensing that Kai was going to take drastic measures for his mind games to succeed, Phil was mentally preparing himself for that at the press conference. They had had their back and forths and verbal jabs in previous press conferences, but this year was going to be different. 2014 was going to get personal. Now, yesterday, Mr. Green signed the poster again with the 2014 Mr. Olympia. What does Phil Heath say to that? I mean, let's be serious. I mean, haven't you learned from last year what you did? <laughs> and, and let's be serious. I mean, all, all jokes aside, there's been 13 Mr. Olympias. They've all had the right, you know, they've earned that right to be able to write that on anything. So don't disrespect the game. You tell him, Phil. The people that root for you, that root for that type of behavior, I just don't understand it. We're gonna show you how talk is so cheap. Uh -huh. It's so cheap. The past is the past. And we need to respect what was done in the past because it's already been Number one, God. But the truth is, the future, the future is what we're going to This weekend, this weekend, we will 
show you what the future brings. And I'm very, very proud to represent those people that believe and think about the power of unlimited potential and the future being not dictated by the past. The past is the past. Kai, I'm gonna tell you something, man. You, you haven't earned a point. You haven't earned a point. A point in four and a half years. You know what? I'll tell you this. You know I'll tell you great. this. I want you to be just as gracious on Sunday. <laughs> I can't wait to hear you on Sunday. This is right here. I want to look you in your eyes on Sunday. Hey, yeah. great this is Sunday. That's great. Desperate. It's not desperate. I'm gonna show you desperate. Rock is cheap, man. I mean, we, we, you know, we've done this. We've when done you this. Go to the hotel room and say a prayer. We've done this dance, man. We're now three zero. Three zero. Say a prayer. Three zero. Say a prayer. Say a prayer. Say a prayer. The Sunday's here. Maybe. Excuse me. Break. Break. The resentment that was beginning to boil from both men spilled over into the press conference when Phil brought up his late father, and Kai intervened, accusing Phil of trying to emotionally manipulate the judges and the fans by focusing on the past. Your best, just like how they expect mine. But I told my father before he passed that, you know, I'm going to bring one home for him. And that's what I intend to do. I'd be foolish to come up here, like I said before. To that's what the first three should have been. That's what the first three should have been. I respect your father. I respect anyone who's had a father. I didn't have one. Phil was having none of it. Incensed by the fact that Kai would stoop so low, he called him out for not only smearing his tribute to his father, but playing the victim. You know what? You know what? I, enough is enough. Enough is enough. This whole this, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You know what? You talked about the past your whole entire career, making excuses, talking about you're the only. You think you're the only person that's ever gone through something in your life? Making excuses. Everybody knows making your excuses. Story. Yes. Making excuses. Yes. yes. You, you know nothing of what you're talking. You know nothing of what you're talking about. You know nothing. Things were clearly getting out of hand between the two of them as years of pent-up frustration on both ends was spilling onto the stage for the entire community to see. It was clear that Kai was just tired of losing, which to any true competitor is understandable. Phil, on the other hand, was tired of Kai complaining and trying to undermine the work that he had put in to get to where he'd gotten. So in a double down on his villain persona and an ultimate mic drop moment, Phil would remind Kai why he was his father for two years straight. Now, I'm no mathematician, but if you're outweighing Phil by 40 pounds, does that put you in a 285 range? How, how's that feel, though, Phil? Did you, did you hear it? Are you thinking about it? Is it marinating in there somewhere? Do you understand what that means? What, what, no, that I, mean? oh, if you want to talk about education, I definitely know what things mean. But, uh, Phil, give me three facts as to why I can't beat you on stage. 2011, 2012, oh! Kai and Phil had just had one of, if not the most explosive press conference interaction in the history of Olympia press conferences, and that interaction was just a foreshadowing of things to come. The prejudging for the Olympia was underway, and Kai and Phil were ready to put on a show. With tensions high, their adrenaline rushing, and the fans going crazy, Phil and Kai were out the gates hard and posing their asses off while trying to establish dominance over the other. Head judge Steve Weinberger had them stand next to each other on the far left during the initial first callouts, and right away you could tell it probably wasn't a great idea. Kai flipped his ponytail hard enough to whack Phil, a gesture which was not only obvious to the commentators but to Phil as well. Having anticipated these exact kind of antics, Phil laughed it off and maintained his composure. He even made sure to not give up any ground and not move an inch. Kai, however, wasn't done. He made sure to continue to invade Phil's personal space and get right up next to him close enough for them to bump elbows, and during this back and forth, Kai snapped, and in the process created one of the most viral moments in bodybuilding history.
The audience went crazy, and the energy of the room went to another level. Something which not only excited Phil, but the fans as well. Moment of bodybuilding that hadn't been seen at this level before. It was riveting, it was exciting, and extremely passionate. To see a rivalry escalate to a point where both guys almost came to blows just showed how bad each of them wanted it. Now, I highly doubt that Kai was actually going to put his hands on Phil because at the end of the day, he is a professional, but it was hard to tell in the moment when it happened. And regardless of how you felt about it, you couldn't doubt how entertaining it was. Steve Weinberger did make sure to separate the two and place Dennis Wolf in between them to avoid another incident. According to Phil, this immediately brought the energy down in the room. So that's up until the point when they separated us, right? Because when Rope Man came over and separated mm -hmm. us, you heard the crowd get really, like, the, you know, it got really loud. And then you could tell the fans wanted a fight, but then it's like, when you see two people like getting into it at a bar or like outside the street, you'll sit there and watch it until there's until there's like a real ass whipping going on, and then you're like, "Break it up, guys! Come on, guys! Like, don't do that! Don't do that!" And that's how I felt. You guys wanted this more than he and I wanted this. Of the fans, his see blood. Fans they want to see blood yeah. until it's too much. Until the, until there is actual blood. All right, right, right. Because you could see that once he separated us, and Steve Weinberger had to like get on the loudspeaker and be like, "Knock it off! Enough!" Kai, go over here, fellas, go over here. And the whole crowd was like, ooh. And then you could sense, me being an energy guy again, I could sense that the energy went from here to here. The prejudging was able to continue without incident as the first call out ended with Kai and Phil being on opposite ends of each other. And then came the finals. It was clear that despite both being on the outside during prejudging, that Dennis and Sean were being compared for third and fourth, and Kai and Phil were clearly first and second. Even though this is a highly irregular structure for placements in the IFBB, it was pretty clear that there was a reason why they were separating Kai and Phil. And for those who understand the sport, it was actually pretty clear who the top contenders for first and second were. They both brought it, especially Kai, as he was bigger than he had ever been and exceptionally conditioned for that size. Phil was still bringing dent and full muscle with razor sharp conditioning. That signature paper thin skin proved to be beneficial again as his conditioning came through as it usually did. He once again had done enough to retain. But the question was, did Kai do enough to beat him? The next name you hear will be your 2014 Mr. Olympia. Crowd roars. Presenting the first place award that is being held by Jim Mannion, and it is a special edition 18 karat gold sandal statue. The Bentweeder Standard of Excellence Award it will be presented by Mr. Rafael Santoja. They will take those awards. A check for $275,000. They will take all that in the title of 2014 Mr. Olympia. And we'll find out who that winner is right after these messages. Hang on a second. Robin says there are no messages. Well, in that case, you're Mr. Olympia. Is first time Mr. Olympia Phil P. At the end of the night, Phil had been crowned the reigning, defending Olympia champion once again and continued to cement his place in the bodybuilding history books. On his mental tier list, he had just tied Jay Cutler, which according to Phil, pissed Jay off so much that they didn't even speak for a while. Now at this point, Phil was an unstoppable object and as he continued to move, his confidence would grow. 
He knew now more than ever that he could become the GOAT if he really wanted to. He had just beaten his biggest threat for three straight years and was given the vote of confidence by the judges that he was the guy and would continue to be. So why would he think otherwise? Phil had become committed to focusing strictly on Olympia dominance as he decided to make his focus to win as many Olympias as possible. So his mind was only on the big show as he was committed to coming in improved as he always has. Because at this point, it was still him versus him. This notion would only be exacerbated by the fact that Phil's biggest competitor would not be competing at the 2015 Mr. Olympia. In an announcement that made bodybuilding headlines, Kai Green announced that he would not be allowed to compete at the 2015 Mr. Olympia for reasons that were unknown. 2015 Mr. Olympia is fastly approaching in... I am regrettably of the realization that I am not going to be allowed to compete. Um. He alluded to the fans that there were things happening behind the scenes that he couldn't speak about publicly. Let me just say behind the scenes, there is just so much more things that are going on than I'm at liberty to share with you. There is a lot more that's happened and that is still in the process of happening that I can not say. This revelation was pretty inconsequential to Phil because as much as he wanted Kai to compete that year, he knew that he could beat all the guys after him. Kai made Phil a better bodybuilder. He kept Phil at his best, pushed him to heights that no other competitor could. So to not share the stage with him in 2015 was a bittersweet feeling. While Phil didn't know it at the time, the 2014 Olympia would be the last time they would ever share the stage together because Kai would never give Phil the satisfaction of beating him for a fourth time, ending their rivalry altogether due to issues that he had with the Olympia organizers and the politics that he felt were preventing him from receiving a fair shake. Phil looks back on his three-year feud with Kai very fondly, because despite the heated moments that they had, Phil recognizes that Kai was the type of competitor that made him better, something which made their bond stronger over time. He's going to freak out when I say this, but I love Kai Green. I don't know him. But I love him because he made me better. And no one else could get me riled up like that but him. 